you haven't lived until you've heard the show Americans are talking about. The show that launches its listeners to the height of humanity. The audio hour that travels the landscape of adventure. The sound that comforts more than the clip of your first bolt. <sighs> it's the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show. <laughs> All right, Outdoor Adventure Summits the Airwaves. This is the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show. I'm your host, our Brandon Long. I'm belay with you for the next about 40 minutes. With us here uh, in Zoom land is the best co-host in all the land, Todd to the top. How you doing, Todders? I'm doing great. Yeah, good. Good to see you. Good to be seen. Yeah. Uh, you look good. The fan is off this week, so it must be a little colder outside. Your overhead fan, yeah. Or the or things you notice. Switched on. I usually do. That's a nice little winter circulation fan. Yeah. Should mention those of you listening. It's not because of the temperature. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's not because of the temperature. It was like no. fifty-two yesterday. Dude. I know. I know. It was snowing today, though. It's snowing outside a little bit. Uh, did, did yeah. you know? So we post. Thanks. First, I want to say thank you to everyone for listening to us on on for the, listening to the podcast all these years. Uh, we do put these these zoom video versions up on YouTube so you can see us, you can see us live. So go to YouTube and watch like our facial reactions and stuff. Uh, you can watch Todd's cats and dogs in the background. I don't have any cats and dogs here at the studio, but, uh, did you know, so we, we've been posting these, this, we haven't pushed YouTube or anything. And we, I mean, we get single digits right on our views, like nine, 12, you know, like not a lot of digit, not a lot of downloads on our YouTube. Most of the downloads come from our, our podcasts uh, because that's where we've been our whole lives. But however, last our last OOA show, Todd, do you know, has uh, like 600, almost 700 downloads on YouTube. I don't even know what happened. I did nothing different. Somebody found us somewhere, I think. Yeah. Can we track <laughs> time where those are in the, in the world? <laughs> I don't know, but I also got an email because – from from pod bean something or other um that the gear 30 podcast that i do that i help with uh is ranked it was like 27th i'm like yeah that's pretty good in wilderness i'm like okay all right in germany i'm like okay i'll take it i have no <laughs> idea why or how that happened but oh and i said 27th there's like 127th or whatever i mean it was like the most random ranking ever but they but 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 it's ranked i tell you it's ranked uh see cats right there you're missing out i am inside the monarch building in the heart just a matter of time i think (laughs) they walk through the heart of the nine rails arts district on the show this week i'll give you a little um trip report a weekly happy on the docket uh in the news including a snow report avi danger olympic qualifying electric zion shuttles dusty gold um, it's, uh, it's my new, I think porn, porn name is dusty gold, uh, deadly parks, gridiron, alpinist, dusty <laughs> <laughs> swipe, right. Uh, we'll give you something worth watching from an old favorites, uh, gear 30 segment quote of the week and an outdoor jukebox featuring a cut from our van sessions podcast. So all this and more on the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show, episode 366. Yes, I did name it Dusty Gold. So let's charge. He summits with the agility of a mountain goat, flashes routes faster than UPS, is more intimate in the mountains than Jake Gyllenhaal. He's Todd to the top. All right, Totters, I'm going to share this weekly happy. This was, I, it says it was recorded at Powder Mountain um, four years ago. I, I went to the YouTube page and looked at it, but Little Deegan, and uh, we may have played this before, I don't know, Little Deegan sends it, and he, he's, not, he's not supposed to send it. Uh, Deeg's first big air, Powder Mountain. I vaguely uh, remember this. Cool too. Come on. You see this, Todd? Oh, yeah. Hey, you turn, turn. I think I think I remember this actually. Unofficial networks recently posted Deegan! it. Stop! Holy 
Holy shit. Deegan! Oh my god. Oh my god! Deegan's dad is gonna get Lay his it ass kicked. Just soars off Are the you kicker. Okay? <laughs> Are you okay? Are you okay? God, I hope I got that on film. He says, I committed. You use the slang right. Yeah, he even got it. <laughs> that was sick. I cleared it. Little Deegan. <laughs> Deegan's now nine. I wonder what Deegan's up to now. Man, big drop-offs, giant cliffs. Oh, man, that's so good. I committed. That was sick. I cleared it. Deegan. I Unofficial Networks must have, like, a, a whole crew of people that just go dig up old videos or something because they always have some awesome posts on uh on stuff like that but uh anyway that's cool good old that's dig awesome the okay so um that's our weekly happy trip report i took the kids skiing on sunday to snow basin look at that cat that is hilarious does he like your beard this cat loves the beard oh. i think it's just beard and so just scratches his head that that's is it. so Pretty much funny. all day God, that's funny. This is Henry, by the way. Henry, Henry everyone. Henry. Everyone, Henry. Yeah. Uh, all oh, right. And then there's dog floppy ears. There's Sabrina right over there. Oh, I do side. see her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Look at those ears. So that's a Doberman with not cropped ears, like back in the day when they cropped all the Correct. ears. Yeah. Uh, so took the kids <laughs> skiing, and um, that was good. That was fun because I was out for about seven weeks because of my broken foot. So, uh, weird but if you don't take your kids skiing every weekend they kind of forget how isla did awesome but emerson up uh, we took to, we took him to snow basin we go to snow basin uh sunday and emerson sort of regressed so we had to cruise on over to the the carpets the magic carpets where he lapped and did fantastic and then so we bumped back over to little cat and it was a long day uh might i suggest when the kids are frustrated take an early break and uh you can take an early break, go in the lodge, grab a hot chocolate, get warm, you know. That's we had to sort of do that and then and then everything went much better afterwards. But uh that's my pro tip as as the parent for the week. If you're just I talked to this other dad up there whose kid was only like and I want to say four, but he said he'd be coming up there for like three years. So I don't really know how that works. But um he's like, Yeah, I I I've been coming up here every year for three years. I can't figure out a hack to for the kid you know like there's no you can't like force it on the kids you just got to bring them up and eventually they get it and then it's it's good times but it's hard to it, there's really no you know patience patience is the hack so there you go um that's the trip report trip report oh my internet connection is unstable that's not good okay on the docket tomorrow today's the third so tomorrow is again we return to Roosters B Street is the Roosters B Street speaker series. Uh, this week's uh, talk is on avalanche accidents. Again, these are streamed live on YouTube, and they are also streamed live on Ogden Avalanche Instagram page. And believe it or not, most people watch these live on Instagram. I was in charge of videoing last week, and it was terrible. I had the wrong setting on my camera. It didn't work out, so... Uh, I fixed it. Should be much better tomorrow. If you'd like to watch it live on YouTube, sounds good. And it will now look good on YouTube. So we don't start at 6. It says it starts. we start at 6. We don't start at 6. We're drinking beer at 6. We start around 6.15, 6.30-ish. So just so you know. Um, there is a limited seating. If you're interested in coming and watching the uh, presentation live, you can come down to Roosters B Street. Um, it's upstairs and and then uh, we uh, do do it live on the Instagram and YouTube. So there's that. Cross country ski via WSU outdoor program at North Fork Park is uh, the sixth. So that's Saturday, I think. Twenty dollars general public. Um, and then we have another Rooster B B Street speaker series next Thursday from six to eight. Uh, area level one through Ogden Avalanche, February 13th through 15th. It's probably full by now. And then another WSU full moon snowshoe at North Fork Park is on February 27th. So there you go. I uh, will share my screen again and we'll go over some news in the news in the news. Okay. Uh, real quick. A, so 
Nordic Valley, zero. Like there's everyone's showing zeros across the board as far as new snow. This is the snow report. Powder Mountain zeros. Powder Mountain's got a 40 inch base. Snow Basin has a 59 inch base, and it says zero in the last 24. But I went to their webcam, and the webcam showed like five between five and six inches today. It just hasn't reported. So they are getting fresh snow. Up, if you're up there right now, you guys know this, but uh, yeah, they are getting some snow right now. Uh, and right now it's Wednesday. Nordic zero with a 15 inch base. Okay, so uh, speaking of Nordic, here's Nord- here's the Standard Examiner's little article on Nordic Valley's new chairlift, part of a massive expansion. It opened to the public, so I'm, I want to go ride this. A planned new chairlift and several new trails, part of a massive expansion at the Nordic Valley Ski Resort, are now open to the public. These improvements are part of the largest expansion project in recent history, according to a statement issued by the Eden Area Facility. The new high-speed lift called the Nordic Express. I put a T in there. It's Nordic. Nordic Express uh, actually started opening on January 24th. Each lift is capable of holding six people, hauling skiers 4,213 feet, including 1,400 vertical feet. The lift is located in a new area of the resort south of the original ski area. Have you seen where that is, Todd? Have you been up there? I have not yet. Mind? Nope, I have not yet, but I want to. Yeah, we should go around 50 acres. Now that I can, you know, move again. Uh, but you can, did you know exactly. this too? You can go up, there's uphill travel is allowed at Nordic Valley during the day and with your dog off leash pretty much. So like the rules are pretty, um, maybe it's on leash. Don't quote me on that. But the rules are pretty flexible there at the Nordic Valley for uphill travel. So um, that's cool. And then they have a new lift. So they're they're very family friendly open to all things kind of a mountain i've always loved nordic it's been a great place to go um there you go it's open cool new stuff uh speaking of backcountry though because uh, we're talking about uphill backcountry avalanche danger is is absolutely insane still there was another death um in uh park city over the weekend and this one this story out of ksl.com at a Provo, a 19-year-old woman was hospitalized after she was injured going over a ski jump. She and her friends had built just above the Aspen Grove Trailhead on Sunday, according to the Utah County Sheriff's Office in a press release. Utah County Sheriff's Office search and rescue team, along with North Fork ambulance personnel, responded to the scene after they received a call around 5.30 p.m. Again, I'm reading this off of KSL, uh, reporting that the woman was complaining of difficulty breathing, back pain. Turns out she broke... Uh, ribs and had a collapsed lung search and rescue officials planned on using a medical helicopter to transport the woman from her location to the trailhead where the ambulance was waiting the um her injuries were severe also the woman and her four friends were in a known avalanche run out zone on a high avalanche danger day and that is the point of the story yes she got hurt she they did transfer her and i think she's doing okay but she's in avalanche terrain um please Please be very careful uh, and know where to, what you're getting into. Um, according to the sheriff's office, the accident occurred in the same area. Three young men were buried in an avalanche on December 29th, 2003. So um, she was young, only 19. She might not have known what had happened there in the past, but check out Utah Avalanche Center if you're local here in Ogden, Ogden Avalanche, and please know the conditions before going into the backcountry. Okay, we talked about the Olympics on the last show. Uh, I guess the Winter Olympics are next year because, so the Olympics are every two years. It's just that they're offset. So, you know, four years in between each Winter Olympics, and that just becomes due in 2022. And the local athlete, there were local athletes competing in the Olympic qualifier at Deer Valley Resort, according to KSL. Um, up there in the old Park City, the Beijing Winter Olympics are only a year away. And a lot of athletes who will be there are in Park City this week for important International Freestyle World Cup. So, that's pretty cool. Going off on or going off a jump on skis and then flipping around a bunch of times before landing. Sure looks like fun. And uh, Ashley Caldwell makes it look easy. She's done this in Park City for years. Been there about <laughs> 10 years. So there you go. So there's some locals and they're um, they're trying to make the Olympics, which is pretty awesome. Good luck to those kids. I think that's great. And I think those Olympics are probably safe. Not so sure about 2020s, which are in 2021. Tokyo or wherever, wherever. Is it Tokyo? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think it is. 
All right, Zion National Park gets $33 million federal grant for electric shuttles. The new buses will replace the 20-year-old gas power. You know what? I think that's great. But, man, do we need electric shuttles in, in the Salt Lake Valley, electric buses in the Salt Lake You know what I mean? Like, our inversion's horrible here. I don't. Maybe it's bad down there, too. I don't know. But Zion National Park will soon be, begin replacing its aging shuttle bus fleet with new electric buses, Park announced in a news release Tuesday. So this is from the Salt Lake Tribune. I think that's great. That's a great idea. Nothing wrong with that. There you go. Next time you're in Zion, might just be on one of the old electric shuttles. Okay, so uh, Dusty Gold. Dusty Gold. It's my new it's my new <laughs> XXX name. In case, in case of my current career goes way downhill, that's the backup, uh, apparently. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So Dusty Hen- Henriksen, he became the first, I had no idea it had been this long, he became the first American in 12 years to win the men's snowboard slope style gold at the X Games. Um, so what was his name? Red Gerard, I think, won gold at the Olympics. But the U.S. men's haven't won gold since Sean White at the, at the, at the snowboard slope style um, at the X Games, which is, blows my mind. So... This is according to actually Forbes magazine. This is a Forbes magazine write-up. In a modified men's snowboard slope style competition at X Games Aspen 2021, the start list contained only 10 names due to a reduced field because of COVID-19. Notably absent from this year's competition, uh, its last three gold medal winners, Canadians Darcy Sharp, Max Perot from Norway, and Mark Morris from, from Aspen. They left the United States uh, prime to claim its, or won in Aspen, um, prime to claim its first men's slope style gold in 12 years since Sean White last did it in Aspen 2009. There were four Americans who could have been up for the task of doing it. The age of these kids just blows my mind. 22-year-old Lion Farrell, 19-year-old Judd Hankies. I don't know how you say your name. Sorry, Judd. 2020 slope style bronze medalist Red Gerard. Oh, bronze medalist. I thought he was a gold medalist, but bronze medalist. I thought he hit gold in something. I swear he did. Anyway, and X Games rookie Dusty Hendrickson. Dusty, that's the best. Um so Dusty's really good. In fact, the Knuckle Huck competition, which I don't know if you're familiar with the Knuckle He's Huck. Using everything and they're just dropping them but down. Watch this. He holds his run. nose, flips off the yeah. tail on the so Knuckle Huck. What is this? Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's my reaction. Press, yeah. Front flip out. Uses his tail like a trampoline. And usually if you do a front flip, you pop off your nose or your front foot. Dusty says, nah, I'm just going to go right off my back foot here. Bye. Look at this. Breaks him off with a little three-piece. Bang, bang, bang. Unreal. Yeah, so. He's using everything. Oh, oops, I push play. So that's the gold. He wins gold in the knuckle hawk, and he's like, okay, that's rad. Uh, let's go ahead and continue that. And then he go ahead and he throws down this slope style. He's already got a gold medal in knuckle hawk this weekend, Craig. He just wants to add to it. 50 50 nose blunt pretzel. So difficult. And those two, two seven, I like the follow cam guy too. Up. That's great. Your body wants to keep going. Dusty says, no, I'm stopping you right here. I want to switch back 12. And I'm going back triple. Hey, how are ya? This is a great. I don't know what that was. That was a great move. Oh, Off the side. Put him dirty, Dusty. <laughs> Put him dirty. Okay. What more do you want from the kid? What more do you want from the kid? So, yeah, he plays gold in Aspen's slope style. Well, I want another gold. I want him to have I know. gold. He, he, he was in the big air contest. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened if he won. Apparently, he probably didn't win the – it says it's going off tonight. Anyway, how cool is that? Kid's a stud. Oh, nicely done. All right, so what's the – this is my favorite, uh, although that was pretty cool. This is the fav, my favorite article of the day, and that is the what is the most dangerous national park? In other words, what national park are you most likely to die in should you go visit? Uh, Todd, dare to, dare, dare, dare to take a guess. The, the mo- Well, my first guess would, of course, be Yellowstone. Right. And that's just the one I hear about more often. Right. Uh, for, like, the average tourist. Not, like, falling off of the front of a cliff or mm. something or, you know, like a, like a mountain face or something. But, like, just taking a selfie or something, There's I think there's more of a risk in Yellowstone. Yeah, and there's books about those who died in Yellowstone. So, um 
Okay, so how often do people die in national parks, and wh- what's the frequency in the most most deaths? So, uh, this one point twenty one interactive uh, did this like visual data thing, and they figured they did all the analysis of it. So, from two thousand seven to two thousand eighteen, there were a total of two thousand seven hundred twenty seven deaths at U.S. national parks. So. While nearly 3,000 deaths is a very high number, it's spread across 12 years and hundreds of sites in the U.S. National Park system. Additionally, there were an estimated 3.5 billion, billion with a B, recreation visits to national parks during that time frame. That equates to just under eight deaths per 10 million visits to park sites. Okay. So, oh, where's this this one up here? Uh In 2019, uh, there was a string of accidents in Glacier. Um, In 2018, uh, Israeli teen fell off a cliff in Nevada Falls, Yosemite. This one right here. In 2016, a man was boiled to death and dissolved. Yeah, straight up dissolved after falling into one of the... Dissolved. Dissolved. That's a horrible word. In one of Yellowstone's famed thermal pools. You're not just dead you're gone uh wild so um okay also it's mostly men men are not doing well in this department uh 81 of the deaths are, are men who died and interestingly enough the age range is 55 to 64 so it's older men um followed by age range 45 to 54 it's only you know, the third, the third, which is the ones we all make fun of, the 15 to 24 year olds who, you know, think they are, they can survive anything. They're actually third. 55 to 64 year olds are the ones with the most deaths, which I found that very interesting. Okay. So, um, number one death, cause of death, however, is drowning, uh, followed by vehicle crashes and then slips and falls, natural causes, and sadly enough, suicide. Drowning num- is number one by a lot, 668. Followed by motor vehicle crashes, 475, undetermined, 351, slips and falls, 335, natural death, uh, 285, suicide, 260, environmental, transportation, other poisoning, homicide. Ooh, that's scary. Now get this, wildlife, there's only eight, only eight deaths. So you think the bears and everything is going to get you? i uh, tell you what, there's a, lot of, there's a lot more ways to die than the animals out there. And what's legal intervention? No, the animals just f you up. They don't kill you though. <laughs> they just drag they you don't around kill a while. You. They just like sort of ma- maim you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so all right, let's first go over the uh, the 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 places that saw the the most amount of deaths. Uh, Lake Mead National Recreation Area, two hundred and one deaths, and it's yeah. basically drownings. Followed by your drownings. S- and, yeah. I, and once you see that number drowning, it makes a lot. Yeah. Uh, that, like Lake Mead would be the number one. That makes sense. Yellowstone, or sorry, Yosemite National Park, 133. Grand Canyon, 131. Natchez Trace Parkway, 130. Now, does that mean that these are the most dangerous areas? No, not it, because they're the most visited. Not if you go by per um, per 10 million visits. So minimum 10 total fatalities. Um, in order to effectively measure this, we collected the total estimated recreational visits for each park and then adjusted the total deaths per 10 million visits. So number one would be North Cascades National Park by a freaking mile um, is the most dangerous park to go to, and it's mostly drownings. Followed by Denali National Park up in Alaska, Upper Delaware Scenic and Recreational River, Big Thicket National Preserve, Little River, Grand so like Yellowstone's not even in this most dangerous one because there's so many visitors and not that many people die right. in, in Yellowstone, but Oh, and death Valley. Look at this. That makes perfect sense down here. on what is that around 12 or 13 or 50? Like not that deadly in death Valley. I mean, let's be honest as opposed as compared it's to still a good name. It's, let's be honest. <laughs> North Cascades. <laughs> oh, anyway, there you go. There's your choose your, your place wisely. All right. This is pretty cool. So ex NFL player um, from the gridiron to the top of the world for charity and inspiration. This dude's a badass. He's 59 years old and he looks like he's 39. Um, used to play for the Raiders, Rams, Saints, and he's going to go climb Mount Everest. He's raising $29,029 for each foot he takes up the mountain. Now, when I first read that, I thought the man's got a bag of feet. Like he's just taking feet. He's just taking a whole bunch of feet up the mountain 
that's not the case. That it's just it's just phrased weird. They just wrote it. It's kind of off. Uh, for every foot he climbs, he's donating or somehow raising money. So, um, which is good. He did do the. I think he's trying to do the seven summits. He's got six of them down. This will be the last one. And he's also trying to once he summits uh, Mount Everest, he wants to go climb. Uh, is it Lotsi? It's a neighboring one. He wants to do that within twenty four hours. Which would mean it would put him in one of the few dozen. I mean, so he's, that would truly put him in more of like an alpinist um, category, you know, instead of just ex NFL player, because that would there's not as many people who've actually done both those peaks in, in a short amount of time. But the man is look at the biceps here at his black shirt. He's in physically phenomenal shape. Uh, good luck to him. And he's doing it for an excellent cause. It's he's, he's raised forty seven thousand dollars to build wells for Tanzanian villages. Mark Patterson, Patterson, Mark Patterson. He's a Sports Illustrated executive. He runs an Great inspirational story. podcast named Finding Your Summit. So there, there's your Aww. podcast hint for the week. All right. Swipe right. Todd, swipe right. Are you on Tinder? Nope. OK, well. There's been nope. a study because you need studies on Tinder. Study shows Tinder profiles with ski pics yeah. get more likes. Uh, let's break it down. This is important. Let's break it down. The, the holiday pics that people swipe right for. So this is kind of hard to see if you're looking at it here on the old YouTube. Uh, but uh, for, for heterosexual men, the overwhelming amount of swipe rights were of pictures of the opposite sex uh, skiing, skiing photos. Uh, number two for heterosexual men were diving photos. I think they were just trying to get a close up. And then uh, let's see what else was popular: foodies and uh, skydiving. Okay, so heterosexual women, what are they swiping right for? Uh, high on the list, animal lover. Job? Does he have a job? No, animal Does he have lover. A job swipe. It rhymes with job. He has a That's dog. A sign of being nice, I suppose, too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but this one gets me skydiving. Skydiving was number one. So take your cat or dog skydiving while eating like a gourmet hamburger and you'll get the swipes all day long. Uh, what do lesbian women prefer? What are they swiping right for? Uh, also, uh, lesbian women prefer uh, the, the animal lovers, um, followed by skiing. Skiing, I think, is number two for in that category, too. Uh also diving oh, and beach bums, beach bums on the list. Okay. What do gay men prefer? Gay men are swiping, right? Number one for beach bums. They just care about the asses apparently. Uh, and then the skiing, skiing. I mean, skiing is up there. Oh no, look sightseeing. Oh, that's good. Sightseeing and hiking. So they're very active. The gay man on, on, uh, Tinder. It's getting there out of the house. Getting out of the house. Getting out of the house. There it is. There's your pro tips for Tinder. Oh, goodness. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, something worth watching. All right. So we did not have uh, Banff this year. I think they're going to do some sort of, you know, like you're like you're watching Sundance from home, you know. So this is Danny McCaskill's latest, uh, The Slabs. I don't know where these For slabs are. the last are. few years, I've really been inspired by rock climbers, finding and developing new routes on cliffs unchanged for millennia. Which has got me thinking, how can I take this approach and apply nope. it to descending on my mountain bike? That's no. Nope. The Dew Slabs are one of the UK's the finest process. Nope, climbs. I oh, don't UK. even want to watch this. <laughs> With 500 meters of uninterrupted <laughs> slab insane. rock, it is the perfect place for me to test what is possible <laughs> and how steep I can descend. Oh, Jesus. This really looks pretty scary. Yeah. He says it's scary. It's probably really scary. Called the slabs. It's on YouTube. You can go watch it right now. To search the slabs, Danny McCaskill. And here he goes, dropping in. Oh. Oh. Edge of your seat. Nausea inducing. <laughs> God. He's good though, man. Look how in control he is. It's amazing. No, he's the best there is. Yeah. He's the best there is. 
man. Look how beautiful this these mountains really cool. are, too. It's so cool. That's yeah, really pretty. Anyway, that's worth watching. If you haven't seen it, it's six minutes, 22 seconds of some awesome mountain biking skills. Well, there you go. Down the Danny side McCaskill. of the mountain. Okay, I found this other one, by the way. Um, I was going to send this to you. Okay, so it's you can't be, because it's all in. It's dubbed over. It's in sub. It's subtitles. I wasn't going to throw it on here, but Todd, you got to watch this. Roland Casho, I guess is how you say that. It's this eighty-plus-year-old guy who just ski tours all the time. He's like retired ski touring guy. Um, is released. On the 20th of January, has 453 views, and this dude's a total stud. And the this has got Banff written all over it. Like it's a beautiful film. Uh, I'll send it. I'll send this one to you, Todd, so you can you can watch it. Otherwise, uh, you can search it on YouTube. Roland, it's C A C H O T Cashot, and it's Premier Trace or something like that. It's such a cool little film um, and inspirational especially those who are, you know, looking at retirement ages and seeing what you want to do there. So, yeah, good stuff. You're looking for something to do for retirement. I, yeah, like if I was to retire tomorrow, I just gonna, I'm just going to ski ski tour all the time. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, it does. It will keep you young. Um, Gear 30 segments. Gear 30 has now begun, and I know it's weird, but it's the 1st of February, begin we begun our ski markdowns so come into the store and get some deals on skis also next week and it feels like we just wrapped up christmas but next week is our valentine's day sale it's called the love outside sale and we have some special products that we brought into the shop to for the occasion we brought back some rumple blankets everybody loves the rumples nice i love the rumples they're fantastic so uh, and then we'll have some Stanley mugs. Um, we were trying to get really fancy with trying to tie it all into the love scene, you know. Um, but that's next week. This week, skis are on. They started started going on sale. Not clearance, but on sale. Kind of move them out. So winter hard goods. Um, that's all I got. Todd, what do you got? Anything? Um, one thing I was going to pitch in on representing Weber State, and that was to chat for a second about Weber State's uh, new outdoor adventure and welcome center. That is right now, uh, like right now. They're doing a, yeah. that is as we speak, they're doing a live yeah. stream of that. Yeah. But that uh, grand opening ceremony is happening right now. So it, by the time this is, it, this is on, it already did happen, but, uh, I guess it's open. I uh, work at Weber, but I, I almost never go over there. I haven't been over there in weeks. So I've not been in the building. I've seen the Well, that's going to be know, I've seen the work that's been going into it. Oh, uh, depending on where you park when you go up there. Um you'll see it almost every time you go to work, right? Cuz it's just right there just south of, of the Arts Building, I think. Uh, it's a little southeast a little bit, but yeah, big building. Yep, yep. Yeah, it's just across from the dorms. Yeah. Um, just north of the dorms, in fact. Uh, but uh, massive 17,000 square foot building, also hosting a welcome center. So I'm assuming that that probably helped to get it made, um, where it's a mix of, you know, every student popping in there for those reasons. And I assume that they're all moved in. I don't know. I haven't chatted with Daniel, so I have to, we'll have to chat with him sometime to find out more about it. But uh, I know it's got a big three story steady. Yeah, that'll be opening up very soon. What's uh, happening to your old building? Sorry. I don't know what's going to happen over there. I think that's yeah. just going to be leveled. I haven't, I haven't heard. Yeah, we um, we were talking about that today. So the next friend employee came into the shop and we're like, hey, what's happening to the old building? We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We'll see. You got some memories of that space. I love that space. It's a just, it's an old house. It was, I think it was the president's house or something at one time. And, uh, we just rented a lot of rafts and skis and stuff out of there for years. Um, and, and I, you know, I worked there for like three years or something. I worked there a while. So all through, all through college. All yes, through you college. did. 
But y'all outgrew it. Ogden outgrew it as well. Just their need for bigger space. I think the facility is probably more in line now with that. So we're going to have to check that out soon. But and, FYI, it is, uh, I guess it's open now. Yeah, which is great. Every Let's student, every new student that goes to Weber will see it because that's where they, that's where they gather for the, in, what do you call that when you when you're new on campus? Orientational, Orientational type things. Yep, yep, that one's there. All right, quote of the week: "The things you think about determine the quality of your mind." That is Marcus Aurelius. Thank you to Banyan One for powering today's 366th episode of the Ogden Outdoor Adventure Show. Look for us on Facebook, Instagram. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, bandycollective.com. Hey, do us a favor on the YouTube. If you, if you do find us on the YouTube, give us a, a little follow, like a subscription. Um, put, hit the subscribe button um, and then the ding the bell for alerts if you'd like. But if you would like to watch these instead of just listen to them, you can find us on YouTube and we would love for you to follow us over there. That'd be great. Otherwise, we are all, all we are always on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, I think iHeartRadio and some other platforms as well. So this week's uh, outdoor jukebox. Brandon, you're asking yeah. you're asking really nicely. Like I'm I'm telling you all to follow us. Yes. Subscribe to us in every means possible. Thank this you. This isn't even a subtle request. This is a demand. Yes. This is a, I'm calling in favors. <laughs> um we 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 if anybody I love it. I don't know if anybody owes us, but uh, yeah. it's a good time to pay up by following and subscribing and and leaving a five star plus review. All the reviews, all, all the reviews. The yeah, yeah. Now on Outdoor Jukebox from that Van Sessions. Tight. That was good. That was good. Uh, this is Vincent Draper and the Coles. We recorded this live on Van Sessions podcast. You can check that out. As John Muir would say, the mountains are calling and we must go. Let's go. You're still the only one I choose Honey, you so wrong You said that I'd be better off Look at me now You hoisted up my anchor You set me free, you said You lost me out Without a map or compass, out of point of reference, or you were my lighthouse. You showed me the way home to the only one I ever known. Look at me now. You said that I'd be better off. I'd never been this lost before. Never been so lost.